Hello and thank you for joining as we discuss the Crosslink Business Module. Today we're going to walk through a return as we evaluate how Crosslink facilitates the completion of business returns by using proven and efficient methods. As we begin our demonstration, it's important to note first that Crosslink Business is integrated into the already established Crosslink 1040 platform. A similar methodology will be used for creating and processing a return. Today we're going to walk through that process, client data to transmit. And finally, we'll examine how Crosslink Business uses proven functionalities to give users various and efficient ways of completing the return. Crosslink has been relied upon by tax professionals for decades. Crosslink Business is directly integrated with the Crosslink 1040 platform and is ready to be a productive part of your office's software far into the future. With that integration, users will recognize the same efficient and intuitive methodology used in Crosslink 1040. Additionally, preparers can utilize many of the signature features of the Crosslink 1040 software, including the digital signature pad, document archive, point and shoot error correction, and many more. Currently, the entities supported by the Crosslink business package are Form 1065 for partnership returns, Form 1120 for corporation returns, and Form 1120S for S corporation returns. Completing returns in Crosslink Business uses the same simple and familiar process as the 1040 returns. The client data will be used for basic information about your client. The income statement and balance sheet is where the initial financial information is input. After completing the financial statements, add and complete any additional forms or schedules. Afterwards, simply verify for accuracy. Print or archive the documents required for both you and your client. Then transmit the return to the IRS. With that, let's move into the program. From our work in progress summary, we'll simply click on Business Returns. Notice the similarities of the work in progress screen. From here, you can access your existing returns, create new returns, or fix any rejected returns. To begin a new return, simply click on the Add New button or use Control A. Enter the EIN, confirm it, make your selection, and click OK. This will open a new business tax return. Many of you will notice the screen layout parallels with the 1040 product. Users can utilize toolbars at the top of the screen for commonly completed tasks. The black information bar displays important information about the return. There's an attached form section that allows easy navigation from general, federal, and state forms. The active form, in this case the client data form, is displayed with color-coded fields and an active window below conveniently gives information and access to various functionalities. With that, let's start on the client data screen. We'll begin by entering information about the business and partner responsible for correspondence with the IRS. From here, we'll enter the firm's address. Afterwards, we'll complete information about the business while utilizing Crosslink's database list to enter information quickly and efficiently. After selecting our accounting method, we're presented with more checkbox concerning the preparation of the return. We can force the preparation of schedules L, M1, and M2, load an apportionment worksheet for asset tracking across multiple states, answer no to all questions on the schedules for other information, and use the information reported on the asset worksheets and depreciation modules to complete the balance sheets where applicable. From here, note how bank information can be entered for tax refunds and payments. The section Prepare Information allows users to quickly enter information concerning the preparer of the return. And lastly, we can track our referral information. That completes the client data screen. Crosslink Business will use information from this screen to facilitate the completion of forms throughout the return. Now that we have the client data screen completed, it's time to enter financial information. With all Crosslink Business returns, most financial information will be entered on the income statements and balance sheets, allowing for a more streamlined and efficient data entry system. First, we will start with the income statement. Before beginning the income statement, it's also important to note that Crosslink users will have the option of importing financial data from the most popular bookkeeping software. In order to begin this process, simply click on the return menu and select Import Financial Data. Looking at entering the information yourself, we'll begin with the income statement. We begin by entering the company's gross receipts and any returns on line 1A and 1B. Notice that line 1C auto-populates. This exemplifies how Crosslink uses color coding to track input and calculated fields. 
By default, data entry fields are light blue, and the calculated or self-filling fields are gray. In addition to entering information directly on the income statement, users can also utilize worksheets to detail information. Worksheets can be accessed with the keyboard combination of Control-W. This will bring the worksheets total to line 3A. You may notice that the background on this field has changed from blue to yellow. This is to designate the number in this field is a total of the amounts from a worksheet. Moving down our income statement, you can see the various other types of income that can be entered. Lines 8, A through G, allow users to list common sources of other income. Line 8H is used for income information that is not listed above and can be linked to the appropriate forms and schedules. As an example, let's consider rental income. We'll start by entering the information on the line, then click into the second field to use our choices. Rental income for a partnership is typically reported on Form 8825. With this proper code, this choice is going to be 11, as we will consider this property A. We'll simply enter our amount, and this amount will move to the 8825. At this point, we've completed the revenue section of the income statement. Notice how the sum of the amounts is located on line A. Now that we've completed the income section of the income statement, let's continue to expenses and start with the cost of goods sold. Line 9D is a calculated field showing the difference between opening and closing inventories. From here, various other business expenses such as accounting can be entered directly or with worksheets like demonstrated earlier. As you can see, when we enter an amount on line 25A for meals and entertainment expenses, Crosslink Business will automatically track the difference between book income and tax income. As we continue through the other deduction section, we'll enter information similarly to how it was entered in the income section. Once again, we'll use our codes to denote an expense that will go to the 8825, and then we'll enter our amount. This field will also carry to the 8825, allowing us to correctly report the income for the business on the appropriate forms, while also allowing the convenience of entering information directly down an income statement. From here, Crosslink will sum the company's expenses on line B, and we will have completed an income statement. Next, we'll take a look at the balance sheet. The balance sheet is a summary of the financial balances of a company. Much like the income statement, Crosslink uses information from this primary form to streamline completion of any business return. As we begin with the top of the form, we're giving an option to reconcile differences in assets and liabilities to the partner's or partner's capital accounts. The next line provides users with the option of calculating amounts from the asset manager. This should already be checked due to our selection on the client data screen. We'll begin entering assets by entering amounts for cash and inventories. As we scroll down the balance sheet, please notice various fields for liabilities and owner's equity totals. Once our return is finished, Crosslink will ensure our balance sheet is balanced. Crosslink Business also adds forms based on data entered on the financial statements. For example, please notice that due to our information on the income statement, Form 8825 has been added to our return automatically with our amounts placed in the appropriate columns. Adding other forms and schedules can be handled with the Add Form button at the top left of the screen or by simply pressing Control A. Crosslink will display the All Forms and Schedules box. Before selecting any forms, let's look at the series of tabs across the top of the window. The first tab, Federal, displays the partnership forms in a numerical order with a search for locating forms or schedules quickly. The next tab is Index. This allows users to find forms by topic instead of requiring them to know the form number or schedule. Another important tab is the State tab. Selecting the State tab will show you the attached states as well as give you a drop down for all of the other available states. Now that our 8825 has been automatically added to our return, let's complete the form. As mentioned earlier, our numbers from our financial statement will be carried appropriately to these columns, giving us a total and then reported back to our Form 1065. With our financial statements and additional forms completed, it's now time to start preparing K-1s for the partners associated with this return. Crosslink Business includes a K-1 Manager. The K-1 Manager allows users to efficiently list out the various federal and state K-1s that can be associated with a 1065 return. 
It's also important to note that if users prefer to see the K-1s as individual forms under their federal form list, they may do so just by simply checking the box at the bottom left. Let's begin with our first K-1 by adding information about the partner. We'll simply fill out a social security number and name, address, and mark some other information concerning this partner. An important section deals with the percentage of ownership that the partner would have concerning the profit and loss of the partnership. In this case, we're going to have 50-50 partners. Directly below is a box to denote one partner as the one that would receive any amounts due to rounding. Once this information is entered, we'll simply scroll up to see the various calculations and data that have been entered and completed onto our K-1 form. Using our K-1 manager, adding additional forms is as simple as clicking add and repeating the process. After we've completed our financial statements and any other forms that may have been automatically added are added with the add form function, in preparing our K-1s, we're now ready to start the verification of this return. In order to do so, we'll simply click the verify button at the top of the screen. And this will inform us of the things that will need to be completed before transmitting or e-filing this return. As you can see with this one, many of these are from the 1065. A double click on one of these will take us directly to that error. Please notice that a lot of these are going to be from our Schedule B. After answering the question that we're dealing with a domestic general partnership, we can simply press enter to take us to the next field that needs to be completed. However, before moving through our Schedule B and answering these questions, it's important to note that Crosslink has a button at the top of the Schedule B which allows us to automatically answer many of these with a no, therefore cutting back on a lot of our data entry time. Once we've gone through and verified our return, simply clicking the Verify button will let us know that our return was verified successfully and then we're ready to print or transmit. As far as printing our return, a very familiar process will be used. We can simply click the Print button at the top of the screen. Please notice that we can also take advantage of the digital signature pad just like within the 1040 software for our partnership returns. Additionally, signed tax returns can automatically be stored within our document archive as well. Once we're finished verifying and printing our tax return, we're ready to click on the transmit button. The transmit button is going to allow us to queue any federal or state returns associated with this partnership by ensuring that we have the box checked here and clicking send. We will now queue our return for transmit and the next time that from our work in progress screen that we transmit, our return will be sent to the IRS. And with that, we have completed and electronically filed a business return using the Crosslink software. As you've seen, Crosslink uses its proven functionalities to streamline business return preparation process. Users can look forward to utilizing the active window, which gives detailed instructions and a quick access to list, worksheets, and form links. The databases, which store information such as bank routing numbers and EINs, reducing the risk of data entry error. The signature pad, an excellent time-saving feature in Crosslink, which streamlines the signing of documents by both preparers and clients. And when used in conjunction with the document archive, it can help reduce filing time and resources by storing digital copies of documents directly within the return. And bookmarks and notes, which are great tools that you can use to remind yourself what items are needed to complete a return. In closing, using an established platform allows Crosslink users to hit the ground running concerning their business returns. Once users obtain or complete the basic financial statements, most of the data entry is complete. Crosslink users can look forward to utilizing the same great time-saving, error-reducing functionalities that they are accustomed to within the Crosslink 1040 software. This concludes our preparation of a 1065 partnership return within Crosslink Business. Thank you.